What's up, you guys? It's me, the Samara Poe, and today we are going to be talking about how everything is content. So I'm going to give it, you know, a couple seconds for people to begin joining. I'm really excited to have you guys here. I am here at my beautiful studio, Pop Up and Create. What's up to everybody who's joining? Um, I'm really excited to be having this session with you guys today. I would say that one of my favorite things about working at a content studio, a multi-purpose content studio and content creation space, just is the fact that every time I walk in here, I'm just so inspired about what I could create about, um, and not just, you know, for that day, but content that is going to last me, you know, into, into the future. So today we are going to be talking about how everything is content. I'm really, really excited because this is um, the third or fourth, I believe this is the fourth episode in our live series where we have, um, you know, different staff members and um, even the owner herself come to create this content and talk to you guys about, you know, these real topics to help you guys with better content creation, um, you know, and just doing it big. So let's go ahead and get into it. So everything is content, right? What do I mean by that? You guys have heard that, you know, that that funny Instagram audio trend. Everything is content. Everything is content. Don't forget to film it. Don't forget to film it. It's like a whole thing, but it is so real. In this age of content creation, it is really, really easy to become, you know, burnt out, to not know what to create next, to feel like you are, you know, lacking in your different options. Here we go. To feel like you're lacking in like just just ideas and things that you could continue to create. However, I am here to help you make content creation easier. It does not have to be hard, y'all. So, I came up with three very easy ways to continue to make content. And now this is content that, you know, can be very in the moment. It can be content that is repurposed. And then it can also be content that's very niche and specific to your audience, right? So I wrote out some notes on my laptop, so I'm going to pull it out. We're going to get into it. Okay, so three easy ways to create content now one of here we go okay so one thing that works well not just for myself but i also do marketing so media marketing brand marketing for actual clients one of my slogans that i just i love i live by is make everything a moment right make everything a moment make everything you do exciting and fun and interesting and unique um and you can do that in a lot of different ways so like let's say for example you're brushing your teeth right that's content that's content that's something that you can literally film and make it interesting for other people to take a look at right so let's say you know you're brushing your teeth in the morning you got your tripod popped up in the corner this you know 30 seconds of you brushing your teeth can now become a you know a reel about why it's important to have a morning routine right that same content can be a little snippet of your day right of your full day you let's say you recorded the full day that can now be just a snippet of your day another use for it could be a funny just a funny trending sound where it's like oh well you know they say the people who talk the most ish got you know stanky breath i bet it ain't me and now that's like a funny reel in itself you know what i'm saying so doing one piece of content can literally last you for so many different uses so when I say make everything a moment, that really goes back into making every piece of your life seem just larger than life and really romanticizing it, right? So brushing your teeth has now become like this like event, you know what I'm saying? Or even what I've also done with like my different marketing clients is like you turn, let's say you, you are a foodie, right? And you just like to visit restaurants. You're already gonna visit the restaurants anyway right? So now what you can do to pre-plan your content is you can say, okay, I'm going to create a schedule 
on these days, I'm visiting these restaurants and um, I'm going to put the name here. I'm going to put the date that I'm going to be here. And now it's a thing. Now it's like a restaurant tour, right? Now it's a campaign. Oh, she's going on this restaurant tour where really it's like, no, I was, a, I was about to go get me some food anyway. I was about to go eat anyway. I just decided to be intentional about what I was doing so that I could pre-plan my content, right? Now you have a campaign built out. I'm on this restaurant tour, right? And now you have endless restaurant content that you can take. Now you can say, here's eight restaurants in 30 seconds. Boom. Now you have eight restaurants that you can name. Or you can say, here's my one experience at this restaurant. So I hope you guys are kind of seeing how you can take one experience or you can even take multiple experiences and out of something that could have been one piece of content, you now have 16, 17, 20 different uses for it. Now, I know I was talking a lot. <laughs> Anybody have any questions so far? That's funny. Holly said stealing because I'm going to eat, period. All right, so let's move on. All right, so... My next point here is repurposing existing content in a new format. Repurposing existing content in a new format, right? So here's something that I do because I don't feel like creating and being on 100 all the time, right? So there will be times I'll literally be kicked back, chilling in bed. I got my phone in my hands and I'm literally scrolling back a year six months, three months to find, you know, a piece of content that I haven't posted yet. Like, let's say I filmed a whole photo shoot that I did, right? That's now a full 15, 20 minutes, however long I was recording that, that I can now go in, take a snippet of that long content that I recorded. And now I can apply a new trending audio to it. You know, before it was, you know, here's posing tips right? Point your feet this way and not this way. Look at how I, you know, interact with the camera. That's one, you know, piece of content that you can create from this one um, video that you created, right? You can also then go back in and say, okay, here's another piece of content from the same video. I'm just repurposing the same video and I'm going to put a new caption on top of it. And this one is going to say, wow, I love modeling so much. It's, it's amazing how well or no, it's amazing how I can follow my dreams, right? Cool. Two months later, use the same video because last time it got 10,000 views. The time before that, it got 5,000 views. Well, look, aesthetically, this must be doing something right. I'm going to use that same video again. I'm going to use the same video again and say, hmm, what do you guys think about this pose? Or what do you guys think about this outfit? Or should I, should I do, should I redo this shoot but in a new color? Now it's a poll, right? That's the same video now. That's the same video. And I have created three different pieces of content surrounding that same video. Now, I, I, I know that there's a mindset thing that comes with that, right? A lot of people tend to think like, well, I've already used it. People are going to get tired of seeing the same, you know, the same content. I'm going to answer your question in just a second, Holly. I see your question. You know, um, people, my, my audience has already seen this piece of content. You know, they're going to get tired of it. And it's just like, you have to really think about it. Really think about this in, in, in terms of basic mathematics, right? One, you see how quickly a reel can go viral on these plat on these social platforms on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. <coughs> Excuse me. Do you think that <laughs> out of those 50,000 people that may have seen your reel that one time, right? Those 50,000 people, I guarantee you that all 2,000 of your followers are not even in that 50,000. So, so you have to remember that when you're creating, 
you're creating with the intention of it reaching more people. You can't be worried about the 2,000 followers, 200 followers, 3,000, 7,000 followers that you have right now. You can't worry about that. You have to think about the fact that there's still billions of people on this planet that need what you have, that need what you offer, that are interested in seeing content like yours. Millions, billions of people, but you're scared because you don't want your audience to feel like, oh, well, you know, they've seen this video before. Y'all want to know something? It worked the first time. It worked. It works the second time. And guess what? Guess what? It's going to work a third time, too. It's going to work every time. And even though it may not give you the same numbers every single time, even though it may not go viral every single time, there's something about it that makes it hit. And you should continue to push out content, push out that repurposed content. So I know that was another, another, another section. Does anybody have any questions? I'm going to go back and answer this one question from Holly. She says, how do you keep all of your footage organized? Because I have clips all over the place. So one of my favorite tools as a creator, as a business owner, um, you know, as a creative entrepreneur is Google Drive. I love Google Drive so much. I love folders so much. I love folders. Love them. The organization that it gives me because I create so much and I, I edit so much. I have you know, Google Drive folders and even on my hard drive folders, right? Set up for this is for all content created in 2023 inside that folder. Here's all content created in January of 2023. You know, inside of that folder, here's all content created, you know, when I went to the beach in January 2023, right? Here's a separate and, and it just continues like that. So I love to just upload my stuff and even right there natively on my phone, you know, um, put stuff into folders right there. So I hope that was helpful. But I mean, I'm a sucker for organization, even right there on your phone without using any external apps. There is, you know, places where you can put, you know, create folders. So I would say take advantage of it. Otherwise, you know, content just kind of gets lost. And I don't know, there's a part of me too that loves just kind of, I literally will go like this on my phone and just scroll, 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 stop. And whatever video I land on, it's like a video I just end up using because I just have so much content just kind of hidden away. So yeah. Again, thank you guys for joining and for asking questions. Um, I hope that you guys are finding this valuable. I do have one final point here. So the third, you know, the third, I don't want to say this, the third point, right, of my easy ways to create content um, is to research trends and topics that are relevant to your niche, right? So you can start out by even just making a list of things that you feel comfortable enough talking about, right? And this can be something that's 10 seconds, 15 seconds, the more you talk about it, you know, the longer form the content can be anyway. But I would say, you know, just find stuff that you're comfortable talking about. For example, for me, content creation, that's easy for me to talk about. I could host a little seminar like we're doing right now, right? It, 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 it aligns with my niche. I'm an influencer. I am a, you know, I, I market. I'm a marketer, brand marketer, media marketer, Um I'm a model who just likes to create. I'm an artist. So that's something that that falls in line with what I do. Something else that I could talk about, right, is, um, you know, the tools that I use. So the tools as a content creator that I use, I love Google Drive, like I just explained to you guys. All of these different things that you can list out, that you can talk about, even if it's something as simple as, here's a, a hack that I found with training my dog. It's still something that you can create that people will find valuable. And something that I made the mistake of doing a lot, because I've been doing this since 2016, right? I've been creating content. I've been on YouTube. I've been, you know, doing this since 2016, 2015, 2016. 
2015. <laughs> 2015. I just assume now, right? Because I've been doing it for so long. Because I I just assume everybody knows this, right? Every everybody knows this. I'm I, I don't even know what to create. Everybody knows this stuff already. And it's not true. It's so not true. There's so many people who are just at the at the at the basics who are just wanting to get started they don't know what google drive exists they don't know that you know i'm screen mirroring i'm recording right now on my other phone so that i can go and grab content from this phone as well they don't know that um you know there's just so many tools and just all the things that are out there for you to be successful people don't know these things and so you have to get comfortable teaching from where you are at right so even if that means right now boy right now i could teach you how to get a thousand followers easy right can i teach you how to get 10 million followers nah so i'm not gonna write that ebook but i'm gonna write this ebook on how to get your first thousand followers because i know that i can do that and so you have to understand you know you can teach from where you are at you don't have to wait until you are, you know, 50 years in the game to, to, to start educating and start providing value to people. It's important to be honest about your skill sets, right? But I think that when you start with where you're at, you research, you know, what's in your, in your scope of knowledge, your scope of current knowledge, excuse me, and you really get deep on, um, on just how you can translate that knowledge to your audience. I think that that puts you in a really powerful position. Yeah. <laughs> Anybody have any questions? Any questions? Anything at all? I think that, um, you know, a big takeaway from today. I'll read over, you know, my three easy ways again. One, make everything a moment. Two, repurpose existing content in new formats. And three, research trends and topics that are relevant to your audience and, you know, create from where you're at. So, yes, I hope that this was helpful. I know that this was really short. I know I talk fast. What's up, Shanice? Thanks so much for joining. But yeah, you know, I hope that this was helpful. If you guys ever have any questions, please feel free to reach out to me. Content creation tips, marketing, modeling, you know, whatever that looks like for you. I'm here to help and be of assistance. If I can't help, I know tons of people who can. So thank you guys so much for connecting with me today. And I hope that you guys watched the replay. You took some notes and you found value in this. Bye.